A couple videos ago, I started off by asking the young ladies to step away so that I could have a conversation with the men in the audience. So, in the spirit of fairness, we're going to do the opposite today. I'm sure the men in the audience can go change the air in a spare tire, or they can clean a weapon or something. This video is going to be about women in a survival situation, specifically. Now, what you're looking at is a member of the ELN. What a lot of people don't know is the most successful survivalist revolutionary organization on the face of the planet today is the Ejército Liberación Nacional, ELN. They have been operating in South America, in Colombia, and Western Venezuela since 1964. A full five years before Neil Armstrong set foot in the deserts of Arizona, or I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, on the moon. They do an exceptional job of affecting survival and operations, and they have for a very long time. Because they don't have a lot of things that hang up men, Women in military basic combat training initially do a lot better in basic rifle marksmanship because they accept the training a lot better than men do, and they haven't learned any bad habits for the most part from daddy's shotgun, quote-unquote. So understand that in this situation, your level of success is going to be vital to the level of success overall of whatever group you're in. Now, I'm going to talk about some things that are going to seem like they're not important, but they are incredibly important, especially when you're talking about children. Now, I'm not trying to be overly sexist, but in a situation, more than likely, that's going to be something the women in the group are probably going to have to be dealing with. A lot of guys like to you know, teach you how to shoot a weapon, and not that that's not important. But there's other things that guys forget about that can enhance the operational ability of the group. The first thing is this. Now, I know this seems like it's not important, but believe me, there are so many groups that, military groups, that have lost operational effectiveness because of guys that can't stand, can't walk, can't march, or do so effectively or as quickly as they could, because they have blisters, because they have foot injuries. This was a huge problem back in Vietnam, back in Korea, World War II. This stuff you cannot have enough of in your survival kit. If you're going to have to be on the move, which is more than likely, and if we run out of fuel, and you're going to be on foot. Believe me, you don't want a kid with infected blisters all over their feet, or you, or anyone else. And if you have enough of this stuff, you can enhance the effective operation of your group by orders of magnitude down the road a week, especially if you're not bathing or not able to wash clothes as often as you would like. And you're dealing with, well you know, sweaty, dirty things. That's going to cause all sorts of problems. Now, the next one is going to probably throw you for a loop. This asset has all sorts of uses, and believe me, down in South America, they're like gold. The colorful aspect of it is a great mood enhancer for kids, but let me list off for you all of the different things you can do with straws. Number one, you know all those little gold chains, those little tiny feathery gold chains? You can slide, well, you can melt off one end and seal it up, slide all of your stuff down, all of your little gold chains. You'd be surprised how many you can get in one straw and then seal up the other end and then you can take it and sew it into the lining of a coat or the zipper side, or someplace, some kind of a seam, and no one will know you have it. 
and you can use it for barter. You can put like one in each. A lot of people don't think about stuff like that. Medicines. Now I know a lot of drug addicts take pills and put them in the straw and then of course crunch on the straw and powderize it and they snort it. A lot of people that use pills do this, but for white hat operations, you can do this with regular medications and store a lot more of them a lot cheaper and a lot more surreptitiously, a lot more efficiently in this type of a container. Like I said, a lighter seals up both ends, label it, and like I said, it can be sewn into the liners, it can be hidden in cars, it can be hidden under, under uh, upholstery, in seats, anywhere. And when it's found, initially, it's just going to look like somebody dropped a straw from McDonald's. Nobody's going to know what it is except you. Toiletries for barter. You can put small amounts of powder, small amounts of lotion, small amounts of shampoo, toothpaste, toothpicks, Q-tips. All sorts of things can be put in here, sealed up, and made for operations. You can pass messages with these things. Write down little messages. Roll it up in a piece of paper. Put it in a straw. Seal it up. Put it in a drink. Not in an actual drink, but what looks like a drink. And then you just go meet somebody and you pass drinks and nobody knows what happened. We used to pass messages with straws all the time. If kids are going to be out and they have a little pack of their own, you can take these and cut them into like thirds or fourths and put them in a side pocket. And if they get lost, they can use these as trail markers, the bright colorful ones, and just take them and slide them over the edge of a, over the end of a little limb. And at night they stick out like a sore thumb. Easy peasy. You can take these and you can fill them with styrofoam, seal up both ends, and you can use these to mark submerged caches of equipment or supplies. You take a bunch of supplies, you weight it down, you tie a string to it all the way to the bottom of a lake or a stream or whatever, and then on the other end you have a nice styrofoam filled straw that's just floating there on the top and it looks like, oh, somebody just threw a straw in the, in the stream or in the ditch or whatever, but for you it's a marker to find a submerged cache of stuff. All sorts of uses. I know this seems like a crazy thing, but they're so cheap, but they are so useful. Now, the messages thing. Sign language is easy to learn. There's only four spoken languages in this hemisphere, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and English. Just learning one other would be fantastic, but in lieu of taking the time to learn the language, get yourself a Spanish dictionary or a Spanish or French or Portuguese or whatever else thing that has all of the common phrases and write them all down on little pieces of paper so that you have a list of them once again in the straws you know and you can put them all in there and you can pull them out as needed so you're not having to carry a whole book in your in your kit and then of course the book gets wet or the book gets lost or damaged or whatever you know then you've lost everything here you have all of them separate and nice and dry and easy access. With kids, you can use them as an operational asset. All these little hand crank dealios, get your kid one of their own specific. Kids love to feel like they're part of things. They're all, one of their own little cheapo radios like this that's got all the little dials and gadgets and different things on it. They love this stuff. But while you're walking or while you're moving or whatever, make it a game. Have them plug in the phones and have them be cranking away. Keeping things charged up. Kids love to have contests like this and maybe they get rewarded with one of those little straws that has some, maybe some crunched up candy in it. You know, and like I said, they come in all colors, all shapes, all sizes, and you can be using them, these little ones, to, to do things and be operationally effective in your group. They also have, and I think I brought it up down here. Let's see if I can find it. There's a backpack, the solar charger. There you go. You know, 
Strap one of these on the kids. Solar charging backpack. Maybe you have them be the ones in charge of the electronics. So one less thing you don't have to worry about. Just give you that much more of an effective capability in your group. They even have an app out there now. It's amazing. You can, you don't need any kind of a connection whatsoever. You can type in a message into the app and it will blink out that message using the flash of the phone in Morse code. And you can get that for the phones. And the kids absolutely would love to be able to learn to communicate this way. Also, just have some stories. Something you can tell them from memory. I mean, I know reading books these days is completely beyond anybody's ability anymore. But to have some stories they haven't heard of, I think they would love that. And like I said, I brought this up just because it was part of the whole foot health thing. But point being, lots and lots and lots of things that can be done that a lot of guys, a lot of preppers don't think about because they're thinking about the big things, but the little things like this, huge, absolutely huge. Kids can be an asset. Simple things like straws can be a huge asset. Um, languages, having everything written down in a couple of different languages, just so you know. And most of the people you'll probably encounter will, learn, will know some English if they're just Spanish. And you can work together. But believe me, just those simple things, moleskin, straws, languages, and the little things for your kids to charge the phones up and having a story or two make life a thousand times easier. So I will leave it there. But thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And like, share, subscribe.